Putting a brain on a chip? This scientific research study didn't just put neurons on a chip, they put whole organoids on chips. Here is how they did it. Hey there, welcome to Science is You. This is a growing channel with the mission to make real biotechnology research accessible and fun for everyone. To support this effort, please subscribe and spread the word. Thanks for watching. So, what is an organ on a chip? Organs on chips are an effort to bring cells grown in the lab in culture closer to mimicking actual organs and tissues found in the human body. See if we have, say, neurons growing in a petri dish. Neurons growing on plastic is a very different situation from what's going on in your body. In your brain, there are multiple different types of cells. In the microenvironment, or mini environment surrounding the cells, isn't plastic. It's made up of proteins and fibers secreted by other cells, mechanical forces like stretching and squeezing. There are flows of fluid and diffusion that take place. And if we want to test, say, a candidate medication to combat neurodegeneration, it wouldn't just get poured directly on the neurons like would happen in the lab. Rather, it might have to pass through membranes separating the actual cells from nutrient-rich fluids like the blood-brain barrier. The so-called organ-on-a-chip research designs tiny devices, chips, containing different compartments with different channels and membranes fluids can flow and diffuse through, and sometimes multiple cell types. But both the petri dish and chips are usually flat. Your brain and other organs are complex 3D structures. Neurons growing in a single layer don't have anywhere near the structural complexity of your brain. This could greatly affect the response of the cells to, say, a candidate medication being researched. That's where organoids come in. Organoids are 3D structures that are made of stem cells. They're like many organs that share some features in common with actual organs, like different types of cells and more complex 3D structures. Not anywhere near as advanced and complex as an actual organ, of course, but a huge step up from the flat plastic dish. But still, with organoids, they're just floating in their growth liquid. They don't experience the fluid forces, flows, and diffusion that tissues in the body do. But these researchers set out to combine the best of both worlds by putting brain organoids on chips. Here's what they did. The researchers designed a tiny chip device containing five parallel interconnected channels. Such devices that distribute tiny volumes of fluid to cells are called microfluidics. Think micro, small, and fluidics, fluid. Two of the channels were used to grow the organoids in 3D. They did this by filling the channels with a jelly-like substance called matrigel that the cells were embedded in as they grew into organoids. The other three channels were used to deliver nutrient-rich fluids. These fluids that are used in the lab to grow cells are called media. But how did they generate these organoids and get them into the channels? To do this, they used human-induced pluripotent stem cells, which are capable of turning into nearly any type of cell in the body. They then made clusters of these cells, which triggered them to start changing into different cell types or differentiating. This differentiation process caused the groups of cells to turn into cohesive tissues called embryoid bodies. These embryoid bodies contain three types of cells endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. In the body, these types of cells go on to form organs and specialized cells like gut, heart, and brain. Here, the researchers didn't just want to look at embryoid bodies on a chip, they wanted to study brain organoids on a chip, so they needed to continue the differentiation process beyond embryoid bodies. External signals trigger cells to change and differentiate. So by altering the chemical composition of the media the cells are growing in and embedding them in matrigel, which is a different physical environment, the researchers could guide the differentiation of the embryoid bodies to contain cells of the brain, brain organoids. But this process takes some time and some work. On their way to become brain organoids, the embryoid bodies must first differentiate into neuroectoderm, the cells that are produced in the early stages of nervous system development. The researchers put the mixture of neuroectoderm tissues and matrigel into two channels of their device. The tissues continued to differentiate within the chip device into brain organoids. As the organoids formed, growth media was pumped through the central channel of the device. This allowed nutrients to diffuse through the matrigel to reach the organoids. After about a month, the neuroectoderm tissues had differentiated into much larger and more complex brain organoids, up to 3 millimeters. 
The scientists found that this perfusion system appeared to improve organoid growth. In organoids grown traditionally without this device, it is difficult for nutrients to reach cells within the dense center of the organoids, causing them to die off. The fluid perfusion seemed to help nutrients reach the cells better and decrease cellular death in the center of the organoids. But how did they know that these clumps of tissue were really made up of cells you'd find in the brain? They observed that genes associated with neurons and other cells of the brain were turned on in their organoids. Intriguingly, they also observed that genes associated with forebrain and hindbrain were active in some regions. They also observed changes in shape or morphology of the tissues, like fluid-filled cavities. Now, of course, brain organoids aren't the same as growing real mini brains. The human brain and consciousness is exceedingly complex, but these organoids show similarities to developing tissues of the brain, both in terms of the genes they have activated and the structures observed. The authors felt that the device they designed greatly improved the brain organoids by decreasing the number of cells that died and promoting the development of the organoids into structures and cells reminiscent of those observed in early brain formation. The researchers felt their work was a proof of concept. That microfluidics could improve brain organoid culture, with the potential to come up with even more improvements to the setup. But what about the ethical issues of growing human cells in the lab into brain-like structures? Where should the boundaries be? Share your opinion in the comments. If you found this video interesting, please don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends to help us out. And remember.